Hey, good morning, everybody. Here we are Thursday morning. We're getting down to the end of the week, but here we are. We have another opportunity uh, to get our dose of God's Word. And this morning, I want to look at something that Paul wrote to the Romans in Romans, the 12th chapter. He says in verse 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Think about here. Here he is. He's talking to people that are Christians. He's talking to people that are saved. And he says, now that you are a Christian, there's something that you've got to do. All right? God, by his mercy, has saved us. He's given us Jesus. We've obeyed the gospel. We've been baptized into Christ. We've put on Christ. All right? And so now he says, this is what's right. This is what you've got to do. All right? That's the idea of this reasonable. It's not an option. All right, so now he says this is the reasonable thing to do. This is the right thing to do. This is now what is required to do. He said we present our bodies a living sacrifice. Now what does it mean uh, by a living sacrifice? Well, it's very similar to what Jesus said. Uh, he said if anyone desires to be my disciple, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We deny our fleshly bodies what we would really like to do, whether it's you know drinking or or, you know, sex out of wedlock, or, or shacking up, or, you know, or just whatever, just basically living life to please myself. This is really kind of what that boils down to. Paul says those types of days, that mindset, that needs to stay in the past. So, but now I present my body, the things I do with my body, as a living sacrifice. Why? So that I can present my body holy and acceptable uh, to God. So just kind of think about that. It is presenting our body, uh, it, 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 if we're living in an immoral relationship, um, is that really presenting my body ex in, in an acceptable state to God? Of course not. Or you know, whatever that, that it might be. So if I claim to be a Christian, Paul's saying this is now what you need to do. He says, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when, when we become a Christian, we, we are to be completely different from the way that we used to. Our thinking is different. The, our lifestyle is different. What we do is different. The way we talk is different. Everything is different because now it's about God. It's not about ourselves anymore. So that's why it says, do not be conformed to this world. Now, think about how, how much, is there a limit on that? Can we be a little bit conformed to the world? Can we be like maybe 25% conformed to the world and 75% towards God? Or, you know, is it kind of half and half or what? I mean, is there a percent, percentage to where it would be acceptable to be conformed to the world in any degree? I don't think so. Now, that doesn't say that we don't sin, and sometimes we do. But that doesn't, that's not a license to continue to do that. Oh, well, all right, I'm, I'm a little bit on the other side of the tracks, and well, I'm just a little bit rough around the edges, but God understands. No, we need to get all that stuff smoothed out. You know, someone who's been a Christian for a number of years, them edges ought not be so sharp and be so rough anymore. They need to get be getting much, much more smoother and rounded out. That's what Paul said. Do not be conformed to this world. Don't think like the world. Don't act like the world. You know, don't kind of, don't, not just kind of ride in the fence, you know, uh, and giving uh, just a little bit to the world, but maybe the majority of the it, it, Any percentage we give to the world, any confirmation to the world, we're not in relationship with God. So that's why he says, do not be conformed to this world. There's no disclaimer on that. There's no disclaimer on how much conformity we can have to the world. He says, don't be conformed to the world at all. And so he goes on, and he says, so that I can be acceptable to God. If I'm somewhat conformed to the world, can I be acceptable to God in any way? No. And he says, verse 3, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. As God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. And I think this kind of goes into this mindset of what he's been talking in verses 1 and 2. Is that I should not have this mindset, you know what, I can, 
I can kind of be a little bit rough around the edges, you know, and I'm still going to be all right with God. You know what? I can kind of be that black sheep of God's family and still be all right with God. Mm -mm. Not in any way, shape, or form. He says, that the grace given me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. I ought not think that, you know what, I can be a little bit conformed to the world. You know, I can be this hot mess kind of a mindset. You know, I ain't got it, I ain't got it right. I'm still a little bit like, I, I, I need to be getting rid of that. Um, I ought not be bragging about that. I ought not be making light of it. I need to be getting rid of it. And so uh, I think that's the idea of what Paul is talking about here. Don't be conformed to the world. Again, what percentage can we be conformed to the world and it still be okay with God? How can I think that I'm going to be all right with God, but yet I still make fun and I still, you know, uh, put these things out there that, you know, uh, I'm the black sheep. I'm on the other side of the tracks, you know, in, in the kingdom. And that, that's, that's making light of, of God's mercy and of his grace. It's not, you know, it's not something to joke about. It's not a laughing matter. Um, it, it, because eternity is in a stake. And I believe that's just the kind of the idea, maybe the, 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 the mindset that Paul's talking about here. Don't think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. For if we are conformed to the world, we're not acceptable to God. And so we need to look at ourselves. And, and, and no one's exempt from this. We can all fall into this trap. And so we really need to consider ourselves and, and look at ourselves. Hey, you know what? I am somewhat conformed to the world. I need to get rid of that. I need to stop acting like that. I need to stop thinking like that. And I and I need to uh, become a living sacrifice again so that I can be acceptable to God because of the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness that he has bestowed upon me. But anyway, I'm going to leave you with that. There's your dose of God's word for today. And I hope we'll get your wheels turning. And let us look at ourselves. Let us consider ourselves. How am I approaching? How am I using um, how am I excusing away my actions and my mindset in light of God's grace? And so let us not be conformed to this world. Let us be at living sacrifice. Let us deny ourselves and take up our cross and truly follow Christ and not think of ourselves more highly or maybe more saved than we ought to. Hey, I'm going to leave you with that. Hope it'll do you some good. Lord willing, we'll get back tomorrow. And I get another dose, get our week wrapped up, and I hope you all have a great day, and we'll see you then.